Hey people, welcome to Limitless. I'm so glad you were able to be a part of this today. And I'm 100% sure this service is going to bless you. Apart from this service blessing you, there's one more way that you can get blessed. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, giving blesses you. And in Limitless, giving not only blesses you, it also makes you a blessing. Want to know how? Yes, because of your giving, we are able to feed hundreds of hungry stomachs in this time of need. And your contribution really matters. That is really going to be a blessing to you. Let's not delay any further and let's dive into the word. Hey guys, welcome to the word. Welcome to the sermon. We are starting a brand new sermon series today and I'm super excited about the sermon series and I know that you're going to love it as well. But I'm not going to reveal the title of this series just yet. Uh, let us build it up, okay? Let us, let us build, up, build up some suspense. But I'm going to start this sermon by asking you a very important question. Listen up now, alright? This is important. What do you think? What do you think is the number one thing that people all over the world lost in the last one year? Think about it now. Think about the last one year, the year that went by. And think about everything that happened in this, in this one year. And think about everything that was lost in the year that went by. And of all those things that were lost, what do you think is the most or the number one thing that most people all over the world lost? What do you think? If you ask me that question, then my answer would be peace. I believe, I believe the number one thing that people all over the world lost is peace. The world lost its peace in the past one year. In fact, I believe the world did not just lose its peace, but the world was robbed of its peace. There has been a massive robbery of peace in this world. The, this is what I think, okay? The biggest heist in the world is the peace heist of 2020 and 2021. And it's even bigger than money heist. And I don't know if you're, if you're someone who, who, who loves the, the money heist, if you love this series, uh, if you're a big fan, I'm not, okay? I, I absolutely hate it. And, and I tried. I tried. I tried to watch this series because a bunch of my friends were buzzing about it, right? Everyone, like, loves this series, at least in India. Uh, it's, like, the top trending series. But I tried to watch it. I didn't like it that much. Uh, I tried to watch and see what is the... What is the fuss really about? I still don't know what the fuss is about, all right? And, and please, if you're a fan, if you're, if you're eagerly waiting for season five, which I heard is coming out in September, um, my birthday also coming in September, but if you're a fan, please don't, you know, please don't be offended. I try to love your favorite series, uh, but I still don't. I hate it. But let's focus now. If you focus away, if you shift your focus from Netflix to the real world, then you will realize that there has been a heist which is even bigger than money heist. And that is the heist of your peace. You have been robbed of your peace. And the, the worst part is that some of us don't even realize that we've been robbed of our peace. But um, let me ask you another question then. If you have been robbed of your peace, then who robbed you of your peace? Because if there has been a heist, then there has to be a heister, right? So who do you think is the heister of your peace? Who do you think is the thief that stole your peace? Who do you think it is? Do you think it's the devil? or the disease? Which one do you think? Or maybe you're, you're thinking it's your boss. Or maybe you're thinking it's your neighbor. You know, that irritating neighbor that, that parks in your parking spot all the time. Or, or maybe you're thinking uh, it's your mother-in-law. Right? And if you're watching this with your mother-in-law, oops, uh, I, I meant, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. But um, maybe you're thinking it's your family, it's your kids, it's your, it's your wife, your husband, right? 
sucking your piece away during lockdown inside the house, you have no escape. Or, or maybe some of you might be thinking it's social media, right? Maybe some of you are thinking it is your phone. Or maybe you're thinking it's, it's the news. What do you think, though? What do you think has stolen your peace? And if you don't know the answer, don't worry. You will know the answer in this series. Because in this series, I'm talking about the heist of your peace. And guess what I've named this sermon series? I've named it The Peace Heist. That's right. That's my title of this series, The Peace Heist. Yeah, you put me in lockdown. These are the kind of titles that you're going to get. All right? but, but let's go back to that question. Who stole your peace away? Who stole your peace away? Um, and let me give you a little uh, spoiler alert. The answer is not just one answer. Uh, it's not just one person or one thing that stole your peace. Uh, it's not just one thief that stole your peace. There are different thieves. And every week, I'm going to talk about one thief that has stolen your peace. And my hope is when you, when you know that thief, when you find out who that thief is, when you catch the thief, you're going you're gonna to get back your peace. And so uh, since today is, is the first week, I'm going to talk about the first thief that stole your peace. But I, I, won't, I won't tell you who that thief is, all right? It's a heist, right? Let's build up some suspense uh, I'm going to read to you the scriptures. I'm going to read to you the text. And uh, let me see if you can spot the thief. If you can catch the thief in the text. You ready? You excited? This is your episode one of the peace heist. Open your Bibles. Open your Bibles to Matthew uh, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to read from uh, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. These are the words of Jesus. This is what he's saying. That is why I tell you not to worry about your everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more important? Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than the birds? Can all your worries add even a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the flowers of the field and how they grow. They don't work and make their clothing, right? Um, and in modern, if Jesus was preaching in modern times, he would say they don't order on mintra.com, right? But yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And then he goes on to say, uh, and, and this is like the, the main phrase, this is like the, 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 the main thing that Jesus says. So don't worry. Say that with me. Don't worry. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? For these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. For your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. Everything that you need. So, I read you the, the text. Now, did you catch the thief? Did you spot the thief? If you did not, don't worry. I'm going to tell you who that thief is. But this is such a, this is such a famous famous scripture, right? Such a, such a famous scripture. Uh, and if, you, if you've been a Christian for some time now, then you probably heard this scripture from somewhere. Or if you've gone to Sunday school, then you, you know the scripture for sure, right? But we, most of us know the scripture as the, the scripture of worry. This is the famous teaching of worry, 
right? Uh, why? Because Jesus starts, he starts this scripture by saying, that is why I tell you uh, not to worry. So, so we read the scripture, we read these words of Jesus, and we are like, oh, okay, so, so worry is the problem, right? We think worry is the problem. We think worry is the thief, right? We think worry is the thief that has stolen our peace. So, so, so we are like, okay, okay, so, so I, I don't have peace because I worry. I don't have peace because I worry. So if I want peace, I just need to stop worrying, right? That simple, that simple, right? Case closed, end of the episode, right? No, it's not that simple. In fact, this answer is so frustrating, right? I don't know if, if this ever happened to you. I don't know if you, you ever went to a, a friend for advice, right? Maybe you were, you were struggling with worry, struggling with anxiety, struggling with, with some kind of stress, and you, and you went to your friend uh, just for advice because everyone is saying reach out, right? Reach out, reach out. So you tried reaching out to your friend, and you, ask your, you, you went to your friend, and you were like, man, I'm so worried about all these things. What's going to happen? And, and your friend just turns to you and just says, hey, don't worry. Don't worry, man. Right? That's so frustrating, right? Has that ever happened to you? Do you have a friend like this? I have a friend like this. That friend is my wife, right? And, and it's so crazy. Every time I, I go to my wife with, with this thing that I'm worried about, every time I'm worried about something, um, it's crazy how, uh, and by the way, you should know this about your pastor, okay? I worry a lot. I'm, I'm like an like uh, expert warrior. And please don't stop watching this sermon, okay? Uh, maybe you're thinking, this is the pastor of Limitless Church? Uh, what kind of a pastor is this? He worries. I'm the human kind of pastor, okay? I worry sometimes. But, but every time I worry about something and I, and I go to my wife about this thing that I'm worried about, Somehow, she's never worried about the same thing. And, and it's crazy. And that is the beautiful part of our marriage, right? Um, the things that I'm worried about, my wife is never worried about. The things that she's worried about, I'm not worried about. We worry about different things. And I think that is, that is beautiful about our marriage. But every time I go to my wife uh, about my worries, and I'm, I might be freaking out, I might be like banging things and breaking things in the house, and I'm like, man, what do I do? Uh, what's going to happen? I'm so worried. My wife will be absolutely calm, and she'll just turn to me, and she'll just say, don't worry. Don't worry. Right? And I'm like, how? How do I not worry? I, obviously, I know I should not be worrying. That's why I've come to you, to ask you for advice. I know, but how on earth should I not worry? Right? My wife is in the room, and I think she's about to throw a, a shoe at me right now, but uh, anyways, I, I, at least her advice to me is much better than my advice to her, right? Uh, because when, when she comes to me and she's worried, I just laugh at her. That's my, that's my, that's my advice. That's my response. But, and, and please don't learn that from us, all right? That's, that's, don't learn these things from our marriage. Learn the other things. But just like that, just like that, we are told in our Christian lives, we are told in all these Christian years, do not worry. Right? Do not worry. People have quoted scriptures on worry to us. People have preached sermons about worry to us. People have uh, shared quotes on, on social media about worry. And we've been told again and again, do not worry. Do not worry. It's a Christian thing, right? Do not worry. If you're a Christian, hey, these are the rules. Do not worry. But the problem is, it is impossible not to worry. If you're absolutely honest with yourself right now, if you, if you leave your Christian parrot brain on the side for a moment, and, you, and you're honest with yourself, then you realize it is really impossible not to worry, right? 
It's impossible. Because you've tried. You've tried in the past, right? You've tried not to worry. And if you've never tried before, uh, then let me encourage you, try. Go ahead, try it out. Try not to worry. And you realize when you try not to worry, the more you try, the more worried you get, right? Not worrying is a worry in itself. Because it is impossible not to worry. It is a human thing not to worry. Uh, to, to worry. Worrying is, is a human thing. It's part of our human nature. We are wired to worry. We human beings are, are worrying beings, right? And, and every time we try, the more worried we get. Uh, and the difference is that some people worry a lot, some people worry less. That's the difference. And, and sometimes when people say, hey, I'm not worried about that. Why are you worried about that? Uh, it doesn't mean that person is never worried. It means that person is worrying about something else. Because everyone worries about something or the other, right? Some people worry about not having a job. Other people worry about the job that they have. Some people worry about not having money. Other people worry about the money that they have. Some people worry about not having a wife, not having a husband. Other people worry about the wife and the husband they have, right? Some people worry about not having kids. Other people worry about the kids that they have. Some people worry about the sickness they have. Other people worry about the sickness that they might have, right? Come on now. This is the number one worry in the world right now. The worry about the sickness they might have. And, and people tell us it's a good thing, right? People all over social media are saying, hey, uh, it's, it's responsible if you're worrying about the sickness that you might have. It's crazy. But everybody worries. And if, if someone is telling you, hey, I don't worry, that person is either a liar or that person is dead. Right? And you're probably seeing a ghost. But um, as long as you're alive on this planet, as long as you're breathing, as long as you're sucking the air out of this planet, you will worry. Worry is a guarantee. Worry is a guarantee. So why is Jesus then uh, telling us not to worry? Why is Jesus in the scripture, in this portion of scripture saying, do not worry? If it's impossible not to worry, then why is Jesus telling us to not worry? Is he playing with us? Is he like being this mean person who, who tells you to do something uh, which is impossible for you and then just watches as you struggle to do it? I, is he that mean guy? No, he's not mean. All right, Jesus is not mean. He's an amazing, amazing friend, amazing God who died for us. I believe what Jesus is, is trying to tell us, to, trying to show us in this portion of Scripture, is trying to uh, tell us the reasons why we worry. He's trying to point out the things that cause us to worry. Because here's the thing, check this out. Jesus doesn't only say, do not worry. He doesn't stop at do not worry. Because if he did, then it would be easy for us, right? It would be easy for us Christians because we could take those words because they are the words of Jesus, they are the words of the Lord. We could take those words and just claim it, right? We could just declare it in our lives and worry would miraculously leave our minds. Worry would miraculously leave our lives. Because you're declaring the word, the word comes to pass. But Jesus doesn't stop at do not worry. He doesn't, he doesn't only say do not worry. He says something else. He goes on. And this is what he says. And this is the key. Check this out. He says, so do not worry about these things saying, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. That is the key. Your thoughts create worry. It is your thoughts that produce worry. In fact, it is your negative thoughts that produce worry. Negative thoughts produce worry. Positive thoughts produce peace. And whichever uh, thoughts are more than the other, whichever thoughts dominate your mind will determine whether you're going to have 
peace or you're going to have worry. That's how it works. That's the formula. That's the, the peace mantra. But there's a problem. There's a problem. And the problem is this. Just like you cannot control your worries, you can also not control your thoughts. Right? You cannot control your thoughts. Think about this now. You might be sitting there at your home, in your living room, watching this sermon, right? You're watching me preach a sermon on peace. But at the same time, you could go from watching me and hearing this sermon on peace, you could go from here to, to far, far away, right? Your thoughts could wander. Your mind could wander. You could go from uh, a preaching on peace to the food that you want to eat. Right? right now, you could be thinking thoughts of pork sarpatel, right? Or chicken biryani. Or chicken dum biryani. Or mutton kebabs. Right? Or beef chili fry. Or prawns rava fry. Prawns balshao. Prawn curry with rice. Right? See, I've changed your thoughts. You went from peace to prawns, just like that. Right? You cannot control your thoughts. You cannot control your thoughts at least all the time. But you can control your focus. And that's the good news. You can control what you feed your mind throughout the day. That you can control. And that is exactly what Jesus is saying in this famous, famous teaching. When Jesus says, do not worry, what he's really saying is, do not feed your mind with all those things, all those thoughts that produce worry. That is what he's saying. And, and some of those things that, that he says are things like, what will you eat? What will I eat? What will I wear? What will I drink? Right? In other words, where will, my, where will my provision come from? Where will my sustenance come from? Where will my protection come from? Where will my security come from? Where will my safety come from? Where will my finances come from? And Jesus is not saying, hey, don't think about these things at all. What he's saying is, don't think about these things all the time. And here's the reason why. Because these things, these thoughts are thoughts of lack. These thoughts are negative thoughts. And here's why. Because uh, all these thoughts, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? Where will my, my uh, safety come from? Where will my uh, finances come from? All these thoughts are rooted in a mindset that says, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. That's why you're asking, uh, what will I eat? Because your mindset is, hey, I don't have enough. That's why you're asking, where, where will my finances come from? Because your mindset is, I don't have enough. These are negative thoughts. And negative thoughts produce worry. But, but this sermon series is titled, the peace heist, right? We're talking about the thing that, that's stolen your peace. We're talking about the thief that has stolen your peace. And I promised you that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you who that thief is, that we're going to catch the thief. And so uh, here's, here's the thief, okay? Let me reveal the thief right now. Uh, enough of the suspense, enough of the build-up. It's time to reveal and catch the thief. Uh, and it's not worry. It's not worry. It's not even negative thoughts. Here's your thief. Let me read that portion uh, once more. So don't worry about these things, saying what will I eat, what will I drink, what will I wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So seek the kingdom of God above all else. Above all else and live righteously, and He will give you everything that you need. Did you catch the thief? 
No, let me read another uh, version of the same scripture. Uh, but seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first, above all else, what Jesus is really saying here, what Jesus is talking about here is your priorities. The thief of your peace is your priorities. It is your priorities that are stealing your peace. It's your priorities. Because here's the thing, your mind, your mind looks like a list. Your mind is like a list. If I could open up your mind and show it to you right now, I'm not talking about your human brain, okay? Otherwise doctors watching this will be laughing at me. But I'm talking about your mind. If I, if I open your mind and I show it to you, then what you really see is a list. Your mind looks like a list. Your mind is not like a tank filled up with all these things. Your mind is like a list piled up with all these things. There are all these things piled up one over the other, one on top of the other. It is very very organized. Everything is piled up one on top of the other. And the top of your list is called your priorities. And what Jesus is really saying in this, in this famous, famous teaching is if the top of your list, if, if, if the things on top of your list are your job, your finances, your health, your family, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your bae, your boo, your dog, your cat. If these things make up the top of your list, if these things dominate your list, if these things are your priority, then it is your priorities that will steal your peace. Your priorities steal your peace. Your peace depends on your priorities. That is what Jesus is trying to say. But he's also saying, if your priority is God, if God is on top of your list, if God is number one on your list, and everything else is number two, three, four, five, six, if, if your job, your family, your finances, your health, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your bae, your boo, your dog, cat, all these things are number two, three, four, five, six on this list. If God is on top, if God is your priority, then God will take care of all the other things on the list. And you will not have to worry about all these things. You will have peace on, in all these things on your list if God is your priority. Your peace depends on your priority. Your peace depends on your priorities. So let me give you your application. This is how you put this sermon into practice. Got a pen? Take this down. How do you put God in the first place in every area of your life? How do, make, how do you make God your priority? This is how. I'll give you three examples and you can, you can fill in the blanks, right? Number one, put God first in your finances. How do you do that? By giving your tithes and your offerings to God first. Not last, but first. Not towards the end of the month, but at the start of the month. Before you spend on anything else, give your tithes and your offerings to God. And when you do that, when you put God first in your finances, God takes care of your finances. Why? Because you put Him first and whoever is first takes control. So now God has control over your finances and you don't have to worry about your finances. You will have peace in your finances. That's how it works. Put God first in your time. How? By spending time with God first. What do I mean? Freeze your time with God. Uh, keep it, fix it, and schedule your entire day around your time with God. And when you do that, when you put God first in your time, God will take care of your time. God will take care of your time on earth. 
and you won't have to worry about your time on earth. You won't have to worry about, am I going to die? Oh my God, everyone's dying. Am I, am I also going to die? You won't have to worry about that. Why? Because now you've put God in charge of your time on earth. And you will have a peaceful life and a long life. That's how it works. Another important thing. Take this down. Put God first in your work. How? By, by serving God first. What do I mean? Uh, if, you're, if you're serving God, if you're serving in church, if you're volunteering in church, schedule that. Fix that. And, and, and schedule your work around serving God. I know it's difficult, but when you do that, when you put God first in your work, God will take care of your work. God will bless your work and he'll take care of your work and you won't have to worry about your work. You will have peace in your work. These principles have been working since for years, for thousands and thousands of years since the Bible. They have been working and they have been perfect. Put it into practice. Put God first in every area of your life. And it works so well. You will experience peace in every area that you've put God first. Why? Because peace comes when God is your priority. Peace comes when the Prince of Peace is your priority. Because if the Prince of Peace is, is in front of your life, all that you're getting is peace. Don't let your other priorities steal your peace away. Put God first. Make God your priority and let the peace of God rule your life. Experience the peace of God all over your life when you put Him first. That's your word for today. That's your promise for today. Put God first and you will have peace. God bless you. God bless you.